<laughs> Just group fuse them all together. So, one, two, three, four and a half. So I need to make one more run. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how I'm doing this double loop. I'm just going to do it with a 12 inch piece folded in half and get one coil out of it. Really just an 8 inch piece, 8 or 10 inch piece. So let me just do this again real quick. So obviously I got my 20, 20 um, 6 gauge core. And really the key is to get a good heavy atomizer. I think the goon works, but for 36 you need something really heavy. So I was using a 30 millimeter atomizer, the mask I was using. So you want to start off with the mask open. Alright. You could put your you could put your core on your swivel. Bend to ninety. And put the other end in your drill. Take a piece of 36, and cut roughly 10 inches off, and leave that to the side. Then put the end of your 36 in your drill, and clap in like a quarter inch, and then space clap in. But try to space clap in it fairly tight. Almost try to make the spaces yourself. Alright, so I take that 10 inch piece. I wrapped it in the clockwise motion and you have to wrap this in the clockwise motion. If you wrap it in the reverse, it's not going to work. It's going to twist back up on itself. So, I pinch the wire, and I wrap it around the first space made, just like if you are doing a loop method, bring it around to the second space made, and down. Alright. Then I take the cap, I feed both wires into the cap, I keep pulling tension on this though, but then wires are in the cap, and then I take the deck, and the deck's going to grab them wires when I close the RDA. Alright, close the RDA, and it's going to weigh it down. Let's see. So here's the Clapton wire coming in. Then the first wire that's looped. And then the second wire and the second space coming back down to the RDA. So it's a double loop method. You just got to make sure that you have a heavy enough RDA and that um, you wrap it in the same motion as you clapped and then I kind of press them all together 
So they're all nice and tight together. I'll show you what that looks like. So now it just looks like a Clapton. Now I'm just going to take my spool like regular. Just hold 90. Clapton. So you don't have just one loop making this space. You have a loop coming behind it. Also assuring that that space is good. And it's kind of hard to get ahead of yourself when there's two loops. And it's hard to go behind when there's two loops. You want to lead it a little more than 90 degrees. I should say a little less. Depending on which way you look at it. Just like an alien, how you lead it. You just want to stay on a tight angle. And I don't go all the way to the end, but I always leave at least an inch or two. Just in case that clap that wanna move wants to move, it's got the space to do it. Alright. I can clip these free. You gotta unravel it. It's two loops. Take that off. This is where my Clapton stops. And you see I left I left the wire bare at the end. Right here. There's no wire. No Clapton. So if my Clapton has to slide while I'm fusing, it's got room to move up and down. It doesn't get caught up with my uh, my twist right here. It's very important with stagger fuse claptons that you give them room. You give them room to push. They need room to move, especially when you're doing many core stagger fuse claptons. So I only need one coil out of this. I got more than 12 inches. So, at about six, I'm going to cut it. So I got one wire in here. The wire that's on my swivel, I'm gonna put a 90 on the end of it. I'm gonna get my drill up here. And I'm going to get both wires in my drill. Alright. Both wires in my drill, but only one on the swivel. The other one's just hanging. And so it doesn't swing and hit me in the eye. I just put a little clip here. For a little bit. Now I could take my 36 and the spacing should be damn near perfect with the double loop method if you do it just like I did it. And it should be as easy as a fuse clapping now. It should just fall in the spaces if you hold the right angle. Just hold the spool back a bit. See how them spaces are already lined up?
once you get to the end, you can take the clip off because there's not much wire swinging around. Twist it, and there's my last stagger fuse clamp. And I'll show you. I mean, these guys just seen a close up of it, but whatever. Really, the spacing's the hardest part. But you know, I, I show a couple techniques on my video where you could do it not spacing it. You could force fuse it. So you can always do that. <laughs> 